Hi, YouTube family. I know I'm looking a little different. I can explain. <laughs> it's not cute not knowing. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. We're going to start off with a hug. It's the beginning of the week. You never know. Prayers for those in Tennessee, up in Connecticut, Rhode Island. There were some storms and a lot of rain across the country, but we send our prayers there. Auntie, why do you look different? Okay, so I thought I was getting my new wig. Not ready. So in the meantime, being overconfident, I started, I washed the, um, I had them wash the one I wear all the time. That damn thing was still wet by the time I got up this morning, so I had to pull out the beach hair. This is what I wear to the beach when I'm with the kids. So I'm gonna have to like reset it. You might see it for a couple of days. Maybe you won't. Maybe it'll be maybe it'll be dry. But it was just a mess. And this is why they say you gotta have multiples. See, I'm just learning. I'm just learning all this stuff with this week game. So we look a little different, but guess what? The show goes on and Auntie's got a lot to say. Prayers for the Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife, Jackie. They got COVID. They're responding well to treatments. I hope this is a uh, um uh a message to his handlers. Stop trotting Jesse Jackson out like this. He's got Parkinson's. He's not the man he was. He wasn't the man he was. When did I see Reverend Jackson? In 2016. I don't know if he can speak. He's really getting into that Muhammad Ali stage where they don't speak and they just stare. And I'm like, why do they keep trotting him out like this? You know, let him rest. He has had his day of glory. He going through this Parkinson's disease, which is a serious disease. I know that his family has to be devastated that the man that they once knew is no longer. Now he gets COVID and he got vaccinated, but he's got a compromised immune system. Stop trotting Reverend Jesse Jackson out like that. Let's respect his legacy. Keep him in prayer. Lizzo, I'm getting fed up. Girl, put out an album. <laughs> put out an album. Stop with the attention stuff. You don't wear deodorant. Now you're bending over, showing your butt to kids in the playground. You're going about this all wrong. You're getting the wrong kind of attention. You are giving people a stick to hit you over the head with. You're crying about, oh, they don't like me because I'm fat. No, you're doing dumb things. And I, I'm just getting to the point where I'm just, I'm, I'm getting tired of Lizzo. I was trying to defend her last week and, you know, because there is fat phobia in this country. But don't, Shikari Richardson, you have no idea you're how I wish I could mentor this woman. If you're going to talk smack, see, there's the thing about talking smack. And, you know, you get a little, you know, you've been feeling yourself. You want to talk a little something. But there's a key to talking smack. When you come in dead last in a race, that's when it's time to be quiet. Those Jamaican girls smoked her. It's good to have confidence. It is. It's good to have confidence. But you can't let it go too far. You got to back up that confidence. And you got to back up that bravado. Now, I'm not saying everything is over for her. But you're going to lose your contacts. You're going to lose those deals. You got to just... You, be a little humble. Be like a panther. Don't hear a panther sneaking up on you. But when a panther pounces, it's... Sometimes there's... Humility can be very good. So when you talk smack, you got to back it up. You got to back it up. Please, Shikari, don't keep giving people a, a stick to beat you over the head with. That's like one of my favorite sayings because people will and they'll clown you and I hated the memes. And when she came in dead last, I just, I, if y'all heard a big, it was me. It was me. I just sunk down in the chair as I watched it. You got to back up all bravado. You got to back it up. But you got to be humble sometimes and gracious. Yeah, you good. But your 15 minutes of fame could be at 14 minutes. You could only have one more minute. So use the minute wisely. I was super excited when I discovered that woman. But those Jamaican girls, they were something else. 
And the, these other people in other countries, they come here to, to win. They they come to these tournaments. They come to win. Chikari. Just be just a little, hun little humble. Country superstar Tom T. Hall. He wrote Harbor Valley PTA. He passed away of the weekend at the age of 84. Don Everly of the Everly Brothers passed away. He was 84. His brother Phil passed away in 2014. They had the songs Kathy's Clown, Bye Bye Love. Right before, they were like really big, like right before the Beatles came. Because then music like really, really changed. And that clean cut look just wasn't in anymore. But the Everly Brothers uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They have a great place in music history, and we remember Don Everly. Jay-Z and Beyonce starring in Tiffany's new ad campaign, and Beyonce is actually sporting a $30 million diamond. It was unearthed in South Africa in 1877. They're calling this the ultimate Tiffany diamond. Audrey Hepburn Award, Lady Gaga Award, and now Beyonce, and the new campaign is out. Still not another good weekend for the Aretha Franklin movie, Respect. I can't wait till they say it's going on video on demand, which should be soon, or just coming on cable, because that is where this movie with Jennifer Hudson, who's amazing singing in it, will find its home. It only made $15 million so far to date. It cost $55 million to make. There was a woman who got offended. Baby, nobody likes your favorite stars to be talked about, but you got to do the math. If it only made $15 million, you got a long way to go to $55 million. I hope this movie finds its home on cable because I think that's where it's going to find its success. I don't know if it'll make up its money. Carrie Ann Anaba, um, she done told what well, we already knew. I'm not coming back to the CBS talk show, The Talk. Well, Carrie Ann, we knew that because you saw that foolishness. And she's had a rough year. She was sick. She got covid she got involved in a lawsuit over a car crash. I think her love life ended. She comes back, and it's all this racial stuff. And she's like, I want no parts of it. They're going to replace Carrie Ann with a man. But she will be back, y'all, on Dancing with the Stars. BET Plus is coming out with a gospel drama entitled Kingdom Business. Devon Franklin, Kirk Franklin. It's there. It's they joined forces to tell the story. It's eight episodes, and it's about the gospel music industry told through the lenses of family, faith, love, and music. This is the premise. There's a woman. She's the queen of gospel. She's the queen of the gospel music. She's got a mega church. But here comes a newcomer in the church, and she could sing. She's got a fabulous voice, but she used to be an exotic dancer. Will they accept her now that she has embraced gospel music and her new calling? This was a show they tried to ship to NBC and NBC they weren't trying they weren't trying to be that daring. But BET Plus has picked up the torch and you will see that show there. Nicole Airy Parker, we're finding out more about her on Sex in the City. Some people are saying she's replacing Kim Cattrall. I think she's going to be one of the newer members, and you know, they're trying to make it politically correct, so you have this black woman. She plays a documentary filmmaker who plays an important part. Marvel fans, are you ready for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? It arrives in theaters Labor Day weekend. It's Marvel's first Asian superhero. It looks so good. During the movie, you're going to see that if you go see it in the movies, because it's not going to be on, on any streaming services, if you go to the movies, you're going to see the trailer for the new Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, the trailer is going to drop any minute. We're like waiting patiently because someone leaked it. Marvel freaked out. But this is what we do know. The movie is coming out in Christmas. Yes, Tom Holland's going to be back with Zendaya. But Jamie Foxx is going to be back as Electro. Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, former Spider-Man, they're going to be in it as well. William Defoe is going to be back as the Green Goblin. Alfred Molina will be back as Doc Ock. So there's a lot of villains. A lot of villains. 
in this new Spider-Man. But if you're a Spider-Man person, like my home, we're Peter Parker fans. We can't wait. So what happened to Prince to get him involved in drugs? When you think about Prince's life, a lot of it in mystery. When he died in 2016, he only weighed 107 pounds. He's 57 years old. He normally weighed about 145. How did the person who was so anti-drug didn't want his band, he stopped dating vanity, didn't want to do no drugs. He didn't want it around him. How did he become hooked on drugs? As they were preparing for Purple Rain, that was like 1984, he had a, a vision, singing in a tub, probably like when he did when Doves Cry the video. He was singing in a tub, and the tub was 10 feet off the ground. Well, the tub crashed, and Prince was in it. This tub with Prince, it went hurling to the floor, and he hurt his hip. A few weeks later, he injured his knee. Now, you know he did all the dancing and flipping, and just he was so like energetic and did so much. His body couldn't take it. They said he went from being addicted to desserts because he loved vanilla cake and chocolate frosting to being addicted to pills. His addiction got worse as he moved to ecstasy and harder drugs. He didn't like doctors. He was self-medicating himself. He did have a stint in rehab in 1994, but he left. His addiction got so bad with the pain, and he did so much. You know, Prince was a performer, jumping and leaping and splitting. His body couldn't take it. And he fell into an addiction with these pills. His people are talking. This Friday on Hulu, Vacation Friends, it starts streaming. John Cena, my girl Molly, Yvonne Orji, Little Rel, Howery, they're all in it. It looks funny. Speaking of Molly, Insecure, Issa Rae, it's coming back in October. As soon as we get to date, fifth and final season, we're going to let you know. In Jeopardy, who knew that a game show could have this much drama? Mayim Bialik, she's going to be the temporary host until they find a regular host. Mike Richards, who stepped down last week, he's still going to be the EP. Can he just leave the building? Because I just think he's going to be too toxic to be around. But it, it really is up in the air about who will be heading up Jeopardy. Thank you guys so much. I know I'm looking a little different today, but we'll be back. But it's just... Just switching, just switching, switching the wigs around, just switching them around. Leave a comment, hit that button so you'll know when a video pops up. Leave a comment because Auntie reads the comments. Have a great afternoon. It's not cute not knowing. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your Auntie of Pop Culture.